Brewers and lab nerds. Now I'm going to show you how to count yeast cells using a hemocytometer. This way you'll be able to tell how many yeasts are alive and how many are dead and also the density of your yeast colony. Uh, that way you can get an accurate pitch when you make your beer so you can get the same every time. Okay, what you need is a hemocytometer which is essentially just a grid pattern that is uh, you can count on a microscope. You also need obviously the yeast and then two different graduated uh, flasks with uh, uh, distilled water in each. Actually I have distilled water here and here I have distilled water with some of the methylene blue solution that you should have seen in a previous movie. Okay, what you then do is you take a pipette, this is a one milliliter pipette and a pipette pump, and we're going to go ahead and take one milliliter of yeast slurry and add to nine milliliters of distilled water for a 10 in one yeast slurry dilution. So here we go, you can see we have the slurry up there, one milliliter. It's important to be accurate as uh, it's going to compound when you dilute it. So that's a little bit too much. There we go, one milliliter. I'm going to add that to the nine milliliters of water that we already have here. Get it all out there, maybe suck up a little bit, shoot it back down again and mix it together. Now if you had a yeast that was very very dense what you can do is drop a couple of drops of phosphoric acid into the solution and uh, shake it and that will go ahead and uh, declog it. So now I have 10 milliliters here. Over here I have a solution of distilled water and methylene blue. What I'm going to do now is take one milliliter of this solution added to the nine milliliters here. That will give us a 100 dilution factor. For most yeast, that is the right amount of dilution for a yeast counting. There you go. Up to. There we go, one milliliter. We'll add that to the nine we already have. We can suck some up, spit it back out. And from there, we're gonna shake it. Mix it real good or real well I should say. All right, now we have our solution and what we'll do is we'll take up a small sample there's two counting chambers we can add a little bit to one side and some to the other there you go and then add a, let's see where I put it. Here we go. We'll add a little cover glass on top of it. It's important not to touch the glass itself. Okay. Now the hemocytometer is ready to be viewed in the microscope. So what we do then is we just get the microscope. And 
There we go. And now we're ready for part trip.